Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. A um, couple of years ago, you know, some VR headsets came out and people got pretty excited about them. There was the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. And, you know, there's been some other headsets that have come out. There's the Microsoft has a product and Samsung has one and there's other products. Uh, but I'm specifically addressing here ones that attach to a computer. And back when those first came out, the Vive and the Oculus Rift, my take on them was it's really cool, it's neat, the 3D effect, the immersion is amazing, but they weren't, a, they weren't really a good tool for flight simulation because the limited resolution wouldn't allow you to read your instruments. And the only way you could read your instruments would be leaning way in with your head to, to get closer to them, and they were still kind of hard to read. But now there's a new product, the Oculus Rift S is in Sam, um, which gives you about 50% more pixels than the original Oculus. Now I know there's an HTC Vive Pro, but that thing is like $1,500 or $1,000, really expensive. I think this thing's $399. And so I want to talk about it and how it compares to the uh, original Oculus and uh, also the HTC Vive. So um, I tested the HTC Vive and the original Oculus when they first came out and I have that, I haven't messed with them in a long time, but I have that pretty well in my memory. And so what I'm gonna talk about here is how this new product is somewhat different than those products that came out a couple of years ago. First of all, in the box, you get only three things. You get the two hand controls, which are very similar to the original Oculus hand controls, very similar. And then you get the Oculus headset. And that's it. There's no um, receivers or stands or whatever you call those things that used to come with it. You plug it in t two times, USB 3.0 and DisplayPort, which all modern graphics cards have. And that's it. That's the only two connections to the computer. There's no AC adapters. There's no these receivers you have to put up. And uh, a lot of that is because of the way the headset's designed. In the, on the previous headset, those were infrared emitters, or maybe it was the other way around. I think the infrared emitters were built into the headset, and then the little stands actually could see those infrared signals being emitted. But now what we have on the, the new headset, are, these are actual cameras, um, as opposed to just being infrared. They're actual cameras. And they just simply use the room itself, the walls, chairs, tables, whatever is in the room, to tell if you're turning your head left or right or moving in or out or whatever. So there's, there's no need to have these stands for, uh, for it to tell what, the motion, you know, what motion you're doing. And it works, for, in my experience, just as well as the, uh, the old way, which involved those stands. Now another thing that's changed is the ergonomics. I would say maybe we took a step back on the ergonomics on this thing. And so I'll talk about that a little bit now. Um, the headset, I don't think the previous one did this, but it, it actually moves in and out like this, okay? And then there's also this ring that goes around your head and you twist this knob to loosen or tighten it. And in general, what I do to put it on is I turn the knob counterclockwise, you know, maybe a quarter of a turn, I put it on and then I turn the knob back the other way to tighten it down. I'll say that this one is not as comfortable. It's probably lighter. Um, I don't have as cl clear of a memory of the weight, but this feels like it's probably lighter, but I would say it's not as, as comfortable. Um, where my comfort lacks is right across the top of my nose. It'll depend on you know the shape of your head and all that, but it's perfectly serviceable. Some people will say, oh, it's fine, and others will say, oh, I, I can't stand this thing, I can't get it straight on my head. But for the majority of the people, it's gonna be fine. Um, and so, anyway, that's kind of how the ergonomics have changed a little bit on it. Hey, one thing I forgot to mention uh, in the previous clip is the difference with sound. It's a pretty significant difference. And I don't know, for me, it's a, it's a plus, but I don't know, it's maybe for a lot of people, it's a lateral move. So the previous headset had, if I recall correctly, these little headphones that would come down on either side. and Essentially, it would 
cover your ears. So you would be isolated from a sound standpoint from the room. And um, that helped with the immersion effect. Because when you do this VR stuff, you want to feel like you're transported somewhere else. So you're in this plane at 10,000 feet flying along. You're not sitting in your office or living room or whatever. Um, and having your ears, not just your eyes, but your ears complete, completely isolated helps with that immersion effect. But one negative, the thing that I didn't like is people could sort of sneak up on you. You know, they come up to you and tap you on the shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? You know, and you, you know, jump through your, jump out of your skin. So the new headset has down firing speakers. So there's a speaker here and here that are right above your ears and fire downward towards your ears. And so, of course, the negative or positive of that is you're going to hear what's going on in the room around you and you're going to hear what's coming out of the VR headset. I will also say that um, bass certainly can't be as good when you're, you know, using a setup like that because you don't have something on your ears, so you're going to lose some bass response. Um, but again, for me, it's an improvement because I can hear what's going on in the room around me. Now, another but, what, but, but you might say, oh, that's horrible, or you know, I really would rather it cover my ears. There is a headphone jack on here. So if you had earbuds, you could put the earbuds in, and they can plug right into the side of this, and you can still have the same effect you had on the other VR headsets uh, by isolating your ears with earbuds. So um, to me, it's sort of an improvement because you have the, the option for both. You can have the ambient sound in the room be audible or you can choose to isolate the sound. So now the big thing is, would I recommend it for X-Plane? Um, first of all, I will say I still prefer to use a uh, monitor. The monitor is more vivid, it's clearer, uh, and also having something physically on your head is um, tiresome after a while. It's not something you're going to wear you know, after 15 minutes, I'm ready to take the thing off. Uh, once I take it off, my eyes are just feel like they're kind of bugged out a bit. And this is just, he these VR headsets in general, this is not about this particular unit. That's just how the experience is for me. Now, as compared to the previous Oculus, as I said before, you couldn't read your instruments. And I wish I could show this to you, but, you know, there's not really a good way to get a camera shot inside the, the headset. So I'm pretty much going to have to describe it to you. But in general, you can read your instruments now. Um, there's about 50% more pixels out there, so the screen door effect is less. Pixels are smaller. And in general, you can read the majority of the numbers. Um, in some cases on the, the Garmin, like 530, 430, you know, you might have to lean in a little bit to read them. But definitely the numbers on the airspeed and things like that, you can certainly um, you can certainly read those. And I will say as compared to a monitor, just the overall vividness of the colors uh, is not there. And probably that is because they switched from using an OLED display to a LCD display in here. And so the, the overall vividness of the colors is just not quite what it used to be. So um, in general, I think for most people, at three, I think it's $399. If you've got a really powerful computer, it's something you might want to try out and experience for yourself. I don't think you're going to sim with this 100% of the time because of the fact you've got something on your head and it gets a little warm and, and a little bit uncomfortable over time. And, um, you know, I just don't think, you know, you go to reach for something, like you need, you need to reach for your throttle. It's hard to, you know, get a grasp on it. You want to turn the dials on the, um, the Garmin. It's pretty difficult with the hand controls. Maybe I'm just not good at it. But um, the big takeaway here, though, is this new headset has enough pixels to where you can see your instruments. And so that's a good thing. Now, next, I want to talk about what kind of computer you're going to need. So for this thing to look its best, you want your anti-aliasing as high as possible. I put it on the very highest setting. I didn't have ambient occlusion turned on, which is that top slider in graphics options. It's the second one uh, from the top is where I have it. And then the bottom slider, anti-aliasing, I had it all the way up 8x um, 
what is it, 8x, uh, FXAA or whatever. Anyway, it's the, the all the way up. And that's where uh, things look the best. And so when you do that, that puts a big load on the graphics card. So in my opinion, for this to be most effective, you're going to want, this is May of 2019, you're going to want at least a 1080 Ti, NVIDIA 1080 Ti, uh, an NVIDIA RTX 2080 or an RTX 2080 Ti. Those are the three cards today that um, I could recommend for this. Um, if you go with anything lower than that, you know, you're going to have to back the anti-aliasing down and it won't look quite as nice. So again, 1080 Ti, RTX 2080 or RTX 2080 Ti would be my recommendation. And when I had that slider all the way to the right, you know, my, uh, my GPU load was pretty high. It was like pretty approaching 100. Um, lastly, processor, you know, you're going to want a fast processor. You're going to want something, you know, in the mid 4 gigahertz range, at least 4 gigahertz. So it's going to have to be a pretty beefy machine. And this is to get the best experience. Now, if you look at the minimum requirements on this and you go with that, it will technically work. And I don't even know what the minimum requirements are. I don't know if they're on the box. But, um, yeah, minimum requirements say you have to have a 1050 Ti. Yeah, that's, that's laughable. Um, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't have a good time with that. Um, go with my recommendation. And, you know, if you can't afford that right now, then just, you know, save up and wait six months down the road. And, of course, there'll be new offerings coming out on these, uh, these headsets down the road. But the good news here is the resolution is improved, and you can read the majority of your instruments now. And that was the biggest problem with this, with this setup before.